In Proverbs chapter 6, what we're going to learn about is godliness in a mystery form. What I mean by that is godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, first through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went back to heaven, and He has sent that gift of godliness back to us as being uh, images of Adam and flesh, but we're being quickened by the Spirit and being renewed into the image of God through Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Now, because of that, Satan's got a copycat. It's called the mystery of iniquity. And they run just like that. Greatest copycat ever. Now, in Proverbs 6, 16, God says, These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Okay, let's look at them. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. You, know, you got people say, God loves everybody. Well, let me ask you a question. Does he love Satan? Does he love the Antichrist? That he don't love everybody. You know, he's actually describing a person here. He's actually describing a person's look. He hates that. He hates his tongue, his hands, his heart, his feet, his witness, and him at his very being. Now, who's he talking about? This is a specific person. Look at the verses before it. Verse 12. A naughty person and a wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. That's before verse 16 here. Look what he's... Uh, look what he, he winketh with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teacheth his with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. Now look at the comparison here between 13 and 17 and 19. See, he walks with a forward mouth. See that false witness down there? That's at the core. Right there. The results... From him functioning like this, he sows discord. He's talking about a specific person, guys. He said a wicked man. You know what Paul called him in 2 Thessalonians? He ain't came in flesh yet. But he's here in mystery form. He's all throughout the Psalms. Y'all ever read Psalm chapter 10? The wicked and singular doth persecute the poor. Look at verse 4. The wicked through the pride of will not seek after God. God is not in all. It's a singular person. Now I've heard people say, well this can just, just describe any wicked person. Yeah, but they're being ruled by the same spirit. It's describing a unity that they have of them being the wicked. And it comes from one source. Verse 10. His mouth full of cursing and deceit. And fraud, and under his tongue is mischief and vanity. This sound like Proverbs chapter 6? <sighs> okay. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. They did that at the first coming of Christ. They'll do it in the tribulation period too. And when Christ comes back, he's going to have something to say about it. His eyes are privily set against the Christ said he'd come to preach the gospel to the poor. If you, ain't, if you ain't picking up who I'm saying this is, which I think you are, here's, here's, uh, here's David's prayer. Break thou the arm of the wicked. It's one person all throughout the Psalms. He's asking him to break his arm. And the evil man seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Okay? Look at Zechariah chapter 11 here. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off. You just read it in Psalm 10. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. That's the Antichrist right there. It sounds like the wicked of Psalm 10. Now watch it. 
Remember, he says, break thou the arm of the wicked. Next verse. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. Sword should be what? Psalm 10 is identifying somebody for you. And upon his right eye, his arm shall be clean dried up. And his right eye shall be utterly darkened. It's clear that this is the man, specific man, that God hates. The wicked again. Next chapter. And him that loveth violence, God's, the Lord's soul, he hates that soul. He hates his very being. He that sows discord among the brethren. Now there's going to be a manifestation of the man one day. right? He's going to be manifested in flesh. Paul said that right here. That man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. He said it in verse 8 also. And now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. There's a specific time he's going to be revealed in flesh. Right now, he's a mystery for him. You say, what does that mean? That means there's a... The same way we have Christ in us, the hope of glory, people have the Antichrist in them. The recompensation of damnation and tribulation to their ultimate destruction. For these things, the wrath of God comes upon the children of disobedience. We're going to look at this.